Hello guys, I hope you're well. So in today's episode, I'm going to share with you my new workflow for editing Fuji RAW files for super sharp, artifact-free, wormless images that match the resolution of the GFX 100S. Today is a follow-on episode from last week where I discussed how to get medium format resolution with any camera in Adobe Camera Raw. During the video, I went through a game-changing new feature in Adobe Photoshop that quadruples the megapixel count and produces stunning images in the process. So this video is specific to Fuji users, or perhaps folk that are looking to step into the Fuji world. So in today's episode, I'm going to share with you my workflow for importing into Lightroom to the finished image. Before we get over to Lightroom though, take a quick look at a section of this print. The one on the left is a regular raw image, the one on the right is the new super resolution enhanced details edit. Look how much more detailed the enhanced image is. Now this is just a tiny section of the photograph. If I were to make this a full size print, the final print would be over A0, a massive 50 by 36 inches. This really is game changing stuff folks, so strap in for a few moments while I share my new process with you. So if you follow this channel, you'll know that I've always been a Lightroom user. And to be honest, I don't think I'll ever move away from it. It kind of ticks most of the boxes that I require ticking, but there's always been that niggling sharpening thing and also the lack of quality when you're zooming in to view your images in the develop module. Don't worry though, I've got lots of workarounds for all of this. So let's dive straight over to Lightroom and get cracking. The image I'm working on is available to download on my website. So if you feel like grabbing that and following along with this edit and this whole process, please be sure to jump over there and download it. Also, you're gonna to need to make sure you've got the latest version of Lightroom, Photoshop and Camera Raw. Make sure they're all up to date. You'll need Camera Raw 13.2 or above to make this work. So on this SD card, I have my image that we're gonna be using today. And I'm gonna pop this into my PC and open Lightroom. So here in the library module, I'm gonna click import, so control shift and I on the keyboard. As you can see, my image is appearing here in the import module. Usually it would have loads of images that we took from the shoot, but to keep this clean and simple, I've just got the one. So I'm gonna check copy at the top, then check build standard previews, come down to develop settings and check none, check into subfolder and then choose the destination the photo is to be imported into. For my example, I'm choosing YouTube and this episode is 126. I'm gonna name my subfolder Fuji Edit Raw and then click Import and that will open the photo in the library module ready to be sorted. So generally, this is where we go through all of our images and pick the best ones ready for editing. But obviously, I've only got the one here and it keeps things nice and simple. Now, the super resolution feature is only available in Adobe Camera Raw, however, it is coming soon to Lightroom 2 in a future update, but for now we have to do this workaround to get the most out of our file. When the new update does become available, I'll be making a brand new video. Now we have the raw file loaded into Lightroom and added to our folder of choice, the next step is to open this in Adobe Camera Raw to use the power of the new enhanced details and super resolution tab that Camera Raw now offers. Although Lightroom has an enhanced details section, there isn't currently the option to increase the resolution into a super res file. But for now, at least, we have to go through a few simple steps to really get this image looking amazing. So first we need to right click on the photo and click show in Explorer. This will bring up the actual folder where the image is stored. And then we need to right click on the file and click open with Photoshop. This will bring the original file into Adobe Camera Raw. To my knowledge, there isn't a way of taking a photo from Lightroom into Adobe Camera Raw. I've tried adding it as a smart object, which does allow you to open it in Camera Raw, but the Super Res feature doesn't seem to be available via this method. So for now, this is how to do it. Here we will see our image loaded into Camera Raw. The first step we should take is to turn down the standard sharpening, which automatically is applied. We'll be applying the sharpening later as this will give much better results. Then we need to right click the image and click enhance. This will bring up the enhanced details section where we can check super resolution. Check super res and click apply and it will generate a whopping 96 megapixel photograph. Now you could apply your edits here in Adobe Camera Raw, 
But as we're going to be taking this image back to our Lightroom catalog, I found it better to leave it as it is and just click open. When we open the SuperRes file in Photoshop, it automatically saves the SuperRes file in the same folder as our original one, meaning that we don't need to do anything else here for now. I would simply just close the image, but leave Photoshop running as we're going to be coming back to it later in the edit to run a few final tweaks. So that's the first section done. Once we've done it a few times, it only takes a few seconds to do, to be honest. It's pretty straightforward. Before we go over the next step, I would just like to tell you about my online photography club called the Photographer's Clubhouse. It's a place where like-minded folk can come together and share their photos in monthly galleries, chat via the community message board, and watch my online exclusive photography classes. Each month I do a monthly video talking about some of the questions put forward on the message boards. So there's heaps to get involved with there and if you fancy checking it out and supporting what I do here on YouTube, your support will be much appreciated. There's a link up on the card and down in the description. Anyway, let's move on to the next step of this uh, editing process and make this image really shine. Because this image was saved into the same folder as the original RAW file, we need to go back to Lightroom and press Ctrl, Shift and I on the keyboard to bring up the import module. Then we need to find that file. So come over to your drive on the left here, select the folder where your image is stored. Now, as we're only adding this to the Lightroom catalog, we need to select add at the top and not copy this time. And as you can see, it's telling us that our original file is already imported and only the enhanced image can be selected. All we need to do is import this and it will appear next to our original file in the Lightroom library. Now we're ready to go crazy and run a quick edit on this file. So here in the develop module, you can see the image is much larger than the original file. And it's also a DNG as opposed to a RAF file. Now this is great as it will help us when we come to sharpen the image later on. But first, let's run a quick edit on this. So boost the shadows a bit, reduce the highlights, the touch, increase the saturation and the exposure. Now that will do, you know, obviously I would spend a lot longer on this, but for the sake of this video, you know, that's good enough. Now you could apply your sharpening here in Lightroom if you wish, but if you really want to get the most out of the image, we need to take it back into Photoshop and apply it there. Don't worry though, this only takes a few clicks. Make sure the default sharpening is turned off in Lightroom and then simply right click on the image, click open in Photoshop. Photoshop will open and we will see the image appear right before our eyes. Now we can duplicate the layer by pressing Ctrl and J on the keyboard and this really helps if we wish to mask any of that sharpening away later. Then come up to Filter, Unsharp Mask and add the required amount of sharpening. I found around 250 works well for this size of image, but this will be a taste thing, just do what looks best. Of course, zooming into your image at 100% helps to see how this affects the image. You can now turn the layer on and off to see the effect. You could reduce the opacity if you require less sharpening or add a layer mask and mask out, say, the sky or something like that. For this image though, I want everything to be sharp. Next, I'm simply going to click Save and it will take this image back to Lightroom saved as a TIFF file. Now don't click Save As though, as this will be creating a different file and we don't want that. We want to be just saving the original file. So back in Lightroom, we can see our TIFF file. Now I would apply a crop if required and for this image I'd choose a 5x7 just to get rid of the lighter sky area at the top and make the image less tall. I also leave my vignette and cropping until this point as well as all of the previous settings that were done are now baked into that TIFF file. This means I can adjust my crop at a later date if required. You know, maybe I want to crop it differently for my website or something like that. Now let's compare the SuperRes TIFF file with the original RAW file to see how it compares. Now I'm going to do this in Photoshop as it gives a better representation. Well, as you can see, this image looks so much clearer, there's so much more detail, and there's no signs of any worming artifacts or noise. Honestly guys, this process is just incredible, and we have all of those working files within our Lightroom catalogue as well, which, you know, it can be easily found when we're looking for our photos in the future. A little bonus tip before I go, I found that Lightroom renders the full screen view better than if you're zooming into the image in the develop panel. So to do this, simply hit F on your keyboard to enter the full screen mode. From here, you can zoom in and out and take advantage of all that lovely detail that we've just extracted from that raw file. 
This is just so cool. Simply hit F again and it will take you back to the develop module. This technique doesn't really take that long, but I think it only really suits images where we want to extract the maximum amount of details from. For example, it's probably not worth doing this if you're just uploading an image to Instagram, for example, or you know, running a few quick edits for some family holiday photos or something like that. This really comes into its own for landscape photography, client work, architectural photography, or when you just want to print massive prints, you know. This is definitely going to be my workflow from now on for my landscape photography work. I do hope you've enjoyed this video. I can't think of another Photoshop update that's got me more excited in years. I really can't. We just need Lightroom to integrate the Super Res into their enhanced details section and it will make the process even more streamlined. So, a big thanks to everyone that's made it this far. If you think others might like this content, this video, please be sure to share it with them. Also, a massive thanks to everyone that continues to support what I do here and also over on my online photography club. Your support is much appreciated. The link for the club is over here and down in the description if you fancy checking that out and getting involved. Anyway, guys, until next week, take care and I'll see you soon. Oh, don't forget to subscribe for future content. Take care.